Defense of a Filipino Woman's Honor is an artwork of Fernando Amorsolo on 1945 that represents his World War II era paintings. Similar works like The Rape of Manila in 1942, Bombing of Intendencia in 1942, and The Explosion in 1944, which are all about the World War painted by Amorsolo, was exhibited in Malacanang Palace in 1948. The painting addresses the horror and honor that the artist tribute to the Philippines as he sees it as a rape victim based on the historical and personal trauma he witnessed and experienced during the Japanese occupation. Although it was painted by a Filipino, the painting was brought from places to places. Acquired by President Harry S. Truman's military observer, who is Brigadier General Frank E. Lowe, during his mission to the Philippines and subsequently taken back to the United States, the painting was eventually passed to another owner and returned to the Philippines. There, it remained until 2012 when the National Gallery Singapore, or NGS, purchased it. This oil-on-canvas painting of Defense of a Filipino Woman's Honor measures 53.7 cm wide and 91.5 4 cm tall. It can also be noticed in his other works that he is in favor of a Filipino ideals and was fond of basing the faces of his subject on members of his family. Fernando Mersolo has something coincidentally similar to famous Spanish artist Pablo Picasso. Picasso suddenly went to monochromatic paintings when his friend died. It is called the Blue Period. On the other hand, Fernando Amrisolo originally paints rural landscape type of paintings. But when the World War II happened, he suddenly went to wartime themes such as the defense of a Filipino woman's honor. By the time that the war is over, he went back to painting rural landscape and Filipina beauty. The defense of a Filipino woman's honor painting showcases combination of shapes and its variations. We can observe the soft geometric square shape of a painting in the wall, a cylindrical candle holder in the altar with the crucifix, and the cloth-covered container in the bed. The subject at the center, a female and the male, are painted with organic shapes which realistically copied the natural human figures. Standing manly is the male wearing a typical Filipino cloth during early 20th century in the Philippines. He has a khaki pants with both ends folded up, barefooted, and wears a blue open-bottled polo. We can see that he places his left hand to the female while the right arm holds a bolo knife. Judging by how Fernando Amorsolo painted the male with developed body with soft contour lines that emphasizes muzzle cuts, while his face has crossing eyebrows and fierce eyes, it appears that he may be a middle-aged man, which may be a brother or a father. On the other hand, the female seems to stand weakly and frightened considering of how her posture is not straight. Compared to the man, the girl is painted with whiter skin complexion. The way her face is painted contrasts the common western beauty with grain of rice-like shape and the sharp-looking nose. What she shows is a close to circle shape of face with a blunt nose which are very natural and common to Filipinos. The eye she has looks scared because of the bottom leads are brought upward by her tense chubby cheeks and semi-open mouth. Both the man and young woman looks in the same direction to their front where there could be an unseen person causing fright to the girl and desperateness to the man. Placed on the floor near the male's right foot is a figure resembling a cup of a Japanese soldier. It can provide us a hint of the unseen person's identity. The male and female subjects are located at the very center of the painting with their top, bottom, left, and right sides are equally spaced. The female and male figures at the center is opposed by the altar table at the left and bed on the right bringing balance to the painting. The left side that shows an altar is covered with white cloth with subtle skirting, has gold color patterns that resembles embroidery. On top is two lit candles sitting on a candle holder 
with a flower base in between. This side of the painting is more neat looking compared to the other side where the bed is placed with a devastating appearance due to scattered shredded cloth. We can see that an echoing of form is constructed by how the subject's posture is painted. We can imagine a diagonal line passing from the female's hair to her shoulder, from the male's shoulder to the tip of the ball and knife, and from his waist down to the knees. The positive space of the subject are being dominated by the negative space of their background. We can see that the subjects are barely bigger than one-fourth of the whole. However, considering the space around, the female and male are placed very near to each other. So near that the male figure partially overlaps his shoulder, arms, and leg with the female figure. This complements the emotion of the painting as if the girl is intentionally hiding behind the man who is trying to shield her from an unseen object or person. As we focus on the altar table and the bed, a linear perspective is constructed with lines made by the top and bottom of the altar and the top and the bottom of the bed, whereas the vanishing points are located at the male's arm holding a ball and knife. As we look closely at the subjects, the light source comes from the front of it. The female and male figures' front skin and clothes appear to be illuminated by light because of the light value used in these areas in the painting compared to their backs which transitions to a darker value that creates a shadow effect. This technique is called chiaroscuro by darkening the background or the subject's back and lightening the foreground or the male and female figure's face and front body to make the two-dimensional painting appears to be three-dimensional. Another thing that it creates is depth. Since the male and female are painted with the brighter shades of colors, brown, white, peach, and blue, they become separated with the darker colored background objects such as altar, bed, wall paintings, and especially the wall due to their balance and contrast of colors. If can observe, it appears that the negative space around them are softer that it add blur effect. With the use of saturated shades of secondary colors, orange, yellow, and green, the painting looks warm and dramatic. The dominant use of this yellow, orange, and greens also caused the negative space to have analogous skin. Judging the positioning of the male and female's foot that is stepped back, their arms swayed aback, and the female that lowers her body, this presents movements coming from front and going backwards. Hearing the title, Defense of a Filipino Woman's Honor, it drives us to assume to see an intense and dramatic depiction related to a sexual assault of a woman, or at least for us. At first there, we can already feel the effect caused by Mursola's dominant use of orange, yellow, pitch, and brown, which altogether brought warmth. Plus, these colors are painted in a darker value and saturated in the negative space, which adds drama. The painting openly tells us a story. A Filipino man holding a ball and knife is defending a young innocent woman who is subjected to rape from an unseen person. We notice that when split in half between the male and female figure, we can see a contrast in emotion. The left side, where the women stand weak and innocent, we can feel a pure and serene emotion caused by a neat altar with colorful flowers, lit candles, a clean curtain, and a crucifix where Jesus was nailed. This contrasts the right side where we can see the man standing strong, subtle contour lines on his flesh emphasizing contracting muscles, the bed sheets, and the cover all shredded and scattered as if a fight happened, and the ball and knife plus the man's facial expression fiercely painted. However, even when the woman certainly had been sexually violated and scared, the man do not seem to be in attacking stance. Notice how his ball and knife are pointing down where a cup of a Japanese soldier is on the floor. This implies that the man will not attack the rapist Japanese soldier, but he still holds tightly to the ball and knife. It is surely because the man will defend the Filipino's honor. This behavior of a Filipino 
is already known by many of us. Ever since the Japanese colonism, Filipinos become patient and tolerate the abuse to us and to the country. But when it reached the point where we cannot hold anymore, Filipinos did not attack but rather defend our motherland. The way our heroes defend our motherland is similar to how the men defend the Filipino woman's honor. 